welcome to When the Lights Went Out on Broadway. That's right, When the Lights Went Out on Broadway. Three weeks ago, we were all living our normal lives as performers, entertaining in New York. Our schedules were jam-packed. We were so much into New York nightlife. Mm -hmm. And little did we know it was looming around the corner. Right. I'm here today with Tim Moss, and we just feel like we had the rug pulled out from under us with this coronavirus flu. It, it just, it came on so suddenly. Like, what was your first reaction? Did you believe it was as bad as what it was, or? Well, I remember when I first saw from Wuhan, China, what was happening over there, I thought, oh, that's all the way around the world. By the way, I, I was calling it Hunan. <laughs> because how many Chinese restaurant is Hunan? So right, okay, so first we... You yeah, but I first Wuhan, heard about yeah. it in Wuhan, and then um, it just seemed very distant, that it had nothing to do with Over us. there, I called that yeah, over there. exactly. And then little by little, they started here and there, and then it was Seattle, and then uh, that's when I really started kind of studying and, and paying attention to what the symptoms are, how it's transferred, and which they still don't have a lot of concrete information. I mean, they do have a lot of concrete information. But if now, we're, but all, we're all hearing the frustrating thing, Tim. We're all hearing so many different things. Exactly. So let's just say, like, for in all intents and purposes, a month ago, which would have been um, February 19th, 20th. Yeah. Um, we were just like... Wow, that seems like a long time okay, ago. It feels like that's the thing. It's like I have lost all track of time. Mm -hmm. um, I woke up today and I didn't know what day it was. Mm -hmm. Somebody said to me, we're like living in a science fiction film. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, as performers, like what, oh. what's been running through your head? Because all of a sudden... Every, when you're a performer, okay, you're constantly having to create your own opportunities. Mm -hmm. And you take every gold ring that comes around on that merry-go-round. And Tim is certainly a person. Tim works day and night. And I have to say, I chomp at the bit too, but Tim Moss leaves me in the dust a lot. Oh, of the time. I don't know like, about that. But, you know, I sleep like five hours and uh, I take every single job that I get. I'm model, actress, comedian, um, spokesperson documentary filmmaker mm -hmm. and you are a oh I'm a singer actor producer writer sometimes director I think yeah and yeah we all wear a little just, yeah you made me reminded me that I'm an author as well and a producer so we have all this stuff that we do and we as human beings are able to go from thing to thing to thing to thing mm -hmm. to thing and we have to constantly create our own opportunities so here we are Tim and I on this date in March and it's like there is a void out there. Yeah. And for me, one of the hardest things is now, you know, I'm, I spend a lot of time on social media, as you do. That's mm -hmm. how we get our stuff out there. But being that we don't have places now to perform, mm -hmm. it seems that the only place that we can perform now are on these platforms. So I mean, here's the problem I have with it. Great idea, but... A, everyone's doing it. I'm, I'm going on there and, like, everyone's slapping stuff up. Right, right. And so how do you get, you know, how do you get quality productions? How do you get good following? Exactly. How do you get your stuff out there? What in, are your in thoughts? In the midst of all of that. Right, it's chaos. Yeah. What, so. Yeah, well, everything, the weird thing is, is like you said, just a few short weeks ago, everything was running and functioning, and everything in, in New York City, particularly came to a grinding halt. Grinding halt. The stores, bars, clubs, everything Subway, shut buses, down. Subways, buses, nobody's on them. So yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they're all pretty much right. empty at this point. Right. And um, it, it, again, people are trying to come up with ways to at least keep, them, to keep their art out there. Um, sometimes they're doing groups, I've seen, where they will have a group, uh, group page where they'll do maybe karaoke, or they'll do cabaret, or um, where different communities are joining together. One thing I found that's very interesting in this time is that communities are really coming together. Oh, I, um, I totally, especially like with performers, we have that mm -hmm. in us to begin with, right? right. We do shows together, so mm -hmm. that's so much who we are. And to Tim's point, that's absolutely true. The communities are coming together. Well, just even like, like New York City and the state of New York, like Governor Cuomo, is really stepping up to the plate. He has really stepped up. But Absolutely. there are a lot of people saying now, and I know there's going to be people that disagree with me, that New York needs to be in lockdown the way San Francisco is. How do you feel about that? I don't know. New York is a big state. 
I don't. I think everybody has been complying very well. Like you said, there's no but hardly anybody on the trains, hardly anybody on the subways. Everybody is taking the advice and staying in. And I think we're doing what needs to be done at this point. Except for you and me, we're not. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, we're going to get slack on no, that but one. I'm, no, but I, I am after this on lockdown. I'm pretty much. I'm going to be in my home. Me too. Just walking around in my underwear for a few weeks, which I can certainly. Oh my god, a, vi a visual <laughs> with, no, with the shades not drawn at all. <laughs> Looking at empty grinder. <laughs> I know that's pretty funny. Well, it's not so funny what's happened with Grinder, but you know, this has really, for all of us in the entertainment world, really, uh, you know, sucked our guts out. Yeah. I mean, when I hear, and I do have this jealousy, when I hear all the people that are getting paid to work from home, there's something really not fair to yeah. us about that. I'm mm -hmm. happy for them. I'm totally happy for them, but. You know, what about the performers that are out there? How are we supposed to make it? A lot of our right. friends are drag performers, singers, bartenders, yeah. wait staff, you name it. Uh, they own restaurants, they own nightclubs. What, you know, what's gonna happen to all of us? Yeah. It's kind of scary when you think about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Economically, we're, we're in, uh, we're taking a heavy hit. Economically, Economically. we are screwed. Yeah. That's... Yeah, and I don't know how it's gonna bounce back because um, Alan and I were just talking that, that uh, once we're allowed to go back out and bars and clubs are allowed to open again and all this, the, our audiences are still in an economic slump. Right. They're not going to be able to just automatically jump right Pick back and right. start handing out money and tips and buy drinks and all of that. It's going to be a slow process back, in my opinion. How slow do you think it's going to be? Well, I think it'll take maybe a month or so after... That well, you know within, what, Jim? I love you. You and I are weeks. we're the cockeyed optimists that yeah. see the world through <laughs> rose-colored glasses. From your mouth to God's ears, I hope it's only a month. I I really do because well, once this they is get tough. their the rent and their mortgage back on and the groceries and all of that going back at, at a normal pace, then they'll be ready to. Because I think everybody, especially that's where nightlife will will bounce back is because everybody has been holed up in their homes Good point. for a psychologically, long time. Psychologically. They want to go out. Right. They want to go to clubs. They want to see some They want to see people. Right. They want to be entertained. Yeah, so I think that's that's why it will it will bounce back, but it's going to take a little while. It's This has been unlike anything any of us have ever done. You know what? That is, that is the God's honest truth. I cannot even wrap my head around everything mm -hmm. that's um, going on, or my wig for that <laughs> matter. Uh, do you have some planned projects? Like for me, you know, I started doing this cooking show, Pandemic Cooking with mm -hmm. Wendy, um, on two levels. It, like, it gets me through what's going on now because I've always used comedy as a way to cope. Well, you, you do too. Yeah, yeah. And we, and we love entertaining people with comedy, but um, it also gives me something to do now. Yeah, well, right. You know, like you came Absolutely. here today and we shot a couple of segments and we had fun cooking in the kitchen. Yeah. It doesn't matter that I can't cook. Why deal with any kind of reality? <laughs> I'm an actor after all. But it, it was really a great way to spend the day. And I Absolutely. think once people like you and I have to start to further isolate, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to be like. Yeah. You know, am I going to yeah. be like walking in the park, talking to the birds and the trees? Well, I've, I've, got, a, I've got a lot of stuff uh, that I will keep me occupied. You do. I've got terabytes of video footage that I need to categorize, review, and get edited. See, so. okay, so you must be more disciplined than me. I never thought that you were, <laughs> but you are, because I have that as well, and I'm really, really dragging my feet. Like, I was, for the longest time, I've needed a sizzle reel, mm -hmm. and like you, tons and tons and tons of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I look at it, and I'm like, oh God, I don't even know where to start. Um, Alan and I, as you know, make documentaries, mm -hmm. and we started working a year ago on a film called Working Dogs, A Love Story. It's the bond between humans and dogs, and uh, it's wonderful, and the bond between the dog and the human, and how therapy dogs and working dogs help mm -hmm. so much in our society. We wanted, we make empathetic films and we wanted to call attention to this. So that film is like we've been shooting it for a year. Mm -hmm. And Alan sat down, who's all, Alan's also in the entertainment industry, uh, he was going to edit it and he was going to edit it and he was going to edit it and guess what got done? <laughs> Zippo. 